All right, guys, so now we get to the nitty gritty stuff. We've talked about different types of um, bacteria, pathogens, or germs, as the non-scientific term is. Now we're gonna talk about principles of prevention. Know that um, there's different ways to prevent things, there's different methods. The book tells you too, decontamination, which is the removal of blood or other potentially infectious materials. Um, it's usually the removal of visible debris, and there's two methods. Number one is cleaning and then disinfecting with an appropriate EPA registered disinfectant, and decontamination method two, which is cleaning and then sterilizing. Um, know that sterilizing is basically um, a more intense procedure, usually using an autoclave, which is steam. So if you're doing skincare, you might have an autoclave for your metal implements. Hospitals use an autoclave. Um, know that a majority of the time, what you're going to be doing in the salon is um, decontamination method one, which is getting rid of the visible stuff, what we see, and then going in there with a special disinfectant such as bleach or quats. The same with that blue stuff that you see at the salon or quats. You're going to first rinse the combs under warm water. You might add a little soap, rinse, and then you're going to submerge it. So know um, that even clean surfaces can still harbor a small amount of pathogens, but fewer pathogens, less infection. And that's the take home point on that. We make it harder for the infection. Uh, you want to clean your tools with washing warm soap and water and then scrubbing them with a properly disinfected nail brush using an ultrasonic unit, using a cleaning solvent. And usually the cleaning solvent is used for like electrical files or certain types of devices. It's not a use for everything. Um, some of our implements will actually clean themselves, such as curling irons. Those are all kinds of reusable items that we don't have to clean. You're not going to take your curling iron, it's very expensive, and throw it right in a, a thing or run it under soap and water. No, because the heat itself will actually kill it. I even had a client ask me this once, and it was really interesting. They want to know um, if the hair color poses an infection risk, and the answer is no, because hair color contains alcohols, it contains ammonia. It's a very high pH level, and that's another thing that makes bacteria easier, hard to grow, is the pH. If something is too acidic or too alkaline, bacteria that are harmful to human, at least, cannot live in them, so they're not a risk. Know that um, an allergy is a reaction due to extreme sensitivity or certain foods or other normally harmless substances. A lot of disinfectants state clearly on the label that you should avoid skin contact because it might make you either have some health effects or it might be a risk of developing contact dermatitis or progressive allergy. Know that sterilized tools and implements in sealed bags assure that clients and you are using fresh instruments. The bag should be open just before the service to show the client that the tools are safe and that protects you from lawsuit. And know that sterilization is the most reliable means of infection control. Not everything is able to be sterilized. You can't sterilize the entire salon. That would essentially mean you'd burn the whole salon down because sterilization is usually wiping everything clean. Our salon, in general, we have to vacuum and clean and mop. That's all how we're going to clean that. So read all the caution um, tabs here. It's important to read the manuf the labels carefully because some of the products can be dangerous. Um, if it tells you uh, how to mix it, make sure you're reading that because if you don't mix it properly, it can be risky for both you or the other flip side, it may not work as well to clean. Know that disinfectants must be registered with EPA. Look for the number on the label. Improper mixing of disinfectants can cause them to become weaker or more concentrated than in manufacturer's instructions. Can dramatically reduce their effectiveness. Always add the disinfectant concentrate to the water when mixing and always follow the manufacturer's instructions for proper dilution. They recommend wearing safety glasses and gloves to avoid contact with the eyes and the skin. If you accidentally jump or you spill, you don't want to get this caustic chemical in your eye. You can go blind. I also want to give you guys um, a personal story here. When I was in cosmetology school, we used to have to mix the uh, quats or these blue solution to submerge our equipments. Um, I remember I was going in there and I'm like, oh, this might actually work. And I guess what I used was actually for the pedicure. We had a liquid one. It was purple. I'm like, oh, this is really unique. So remember I added it to the water, it had a weird grainy like particles in there, probably because it was old. I mixed it in, um, we had a glass bowl for the things. Just by putting it in the glass and plastic bowl, because we had the one glass one, the plastic thing, I put it in both, it actually caused etching. Imagine if you took a metal knife and you started scratching the glass and the plastic, that happened within five minutes. I didn't think anything of it, because I actually wasn't watching and seeing properly. Someone said, oh, that looks funny, but we ignored it. Someone put their um, nail clippers in there, completely ruined the metal on it. That's how strong it was. So that's why it's important to make sure that you're labeling everything and reading everything. My cosmetology teacher was not mad at me because she apologized because the same thing happened last year. It wasn't marked properly. 
And that's why it's always important to make sure you put things back and know what's what. Because sometimes the color like is an indicator. It wasn't just a fun color. It was probably meant to tell me, oh, that's for something else. So know that decontamination method two is two steps, cleaning and sterilizing. Sterilize is often you can use incorrectly. Sterilization is the process that completely destroys all microbial life, including spores. Know that there's different types, such as steam autoclave, dry heat. Know that dry heat forms of sterilization are less efficient and require longer times at higher temperatures. Dry heat sterilization is not recommended for use in salons for that reason. Know that the CDC requires um, weekly testing of the autoclave if you use one in the salon. Know that not all disinfectants are created the same, and that's why it's important to choose one carefully. If the label does not have the word concentrate on it, the product has already been mixed. So if you see the word concentrate that's on it in big letters, read the directions because you might have to mix it with two or three cups of water or a certain type of measurement. Know that disinfectants must have efficacy. These are claims on the label. Efficacy is the ability to produce an effect, such as it claims to kill um, certain types of bacteria or it's bacterial cidal, fungal cidal. That's all examples of efficacy. Know that the bio burden is a number of viable organisms in or on an object surface or on organic material. Um, know that it's very important for a disinfectant. Read the list on ideal ones. It has to be EPA approved. It's ideal that it would have no odor, but that's not always possible. It's ideal that it's not non-corrosive, that it is non-corrosive, meaning it won't corrode surfaces and ruin tools. Know that it should be inexpensive and require that it be changed after a long time, such as a week, a month, or daily, so it cannot last longer. Read the Did You Know? They recent, the EPA recently approved a brand new disinfectant. I have not heard of this in the salon. It's called AHP, Accelerated Hydrogen Peroxide. This is a disinfectant that is based on stabilizing hydrogen peroxide. It needs to be changed only every 14 days. It is non-toxic to the skin and the environment. And there is an APH formula that is available for disinfecting pedicure tubs. Peroxide, if you ever pour it on a wound, that cleans out the wound after we rinse it and flush it. That's really good at killing spores and certain types of bacteria. Know that bleach is not a magic potion. All disinfectants, including bleach, are inactivated, made less effective in the presence of many substances, including oils, lotions, creams, hair, skin, nails, dust, and nail filings. If bleach is used to disinfect equipment, it is critical to use the detergent first to thoroughly clean the equipment and remove all debris. Never, ever, ever mix detergent with bleaches. Do not ever do this where you take two chemicals and go, oh, I wonder what happens. Because I know that runs in the back of our head as hairdressers, but what happens is you can accidentally create a toxic reaction, such as ammonia and bleach. Personal story here, I remember I was fooling around with a friend and we wanted to make um, an exothermic hair bleach, which is a really bad idea. And the only thing I could think of to add to the bleach was acetone, hair bleach. We added it and the amount of like fume that came off was so strong, I started coughing. We had to air out everything. We essentially, I think my friend said we created a, chloroform gas or something really ridiculous. Um, I don't know how true that was, but know that there's a risk anytime you're mixing chemicals and thinking it's a joke. It's very serious. Don't do it. Know um, that right here, salons pose a lower risk when it compared to a hospital. And for this reason, um, a hospital has to meet a lot of stricter standards. Know that not all household bleaches are effective as disinfectants. To be effective, a bleach must have an EPA registration number that contains at least 5% sodium hypochlorite and be diluted properly to a 10% solution, nine parts water to one part bleach. Know that implements must thoroughly be cleaned. Know that some implements require immersion where you fully put them under. Some examples are scissors and combs. Now. Um, on a personal note here, a lot of you will use really high-end shears, and this is what I always do. I used to run them under water, warm soap and water, dry them off carefully, and make sure my shears are oiled. I would not submerge them in the um, quats because it can actually corrode the metal if you're not careful. Know that um, it is very important if the product says complete immersion that you submerge it. Know that um, certain disinfectants have certain times you're supposed to submerge it or keep it in there for 10 minutes, do that. Be very careful when you're going over because you can actually compromise the um, equipment. 
know that there's different types of infectants, um, know that fumigants are not used because they were used um, in dry cabinet sanitizers. They would destroy pathogenic bacteria. However, they were not known to be carcinogenic. They ended up finding out that low concentration of formaldehyde gas was very irritating, can cause um, allergic reactions after prolonged exposure, and then it's potentially um, cancer causing. Know that glueroaldehyde is a powerful chemical used to sterilize surgical equipment in hospitals. It is not safe for salon use. Know that phenolic um, disinfectants are powerful tuberculocidal disinfectants. They have a very high pH and they form of formaldehyde. They, meaning they're a type of formaldehyde, they can damage the skin and the eyes. Know that um, phenol can damage plastic and rubber and cause metals to rust. If it's like the phenol peel, which I think it is, if you get that on your skin, it causes a violent reaction. Extra care should be avoided um, to avoid contact with phenolic disinfectants. Phenols are known as carcinogenics. Know that quaternary ammonium compounds, quats, are disinfectants that are very effective when used properly in the salon. The most advanced type of these formulations is called multiple quats. Multiple quats have a blend that work together that increase the effectiveness of the disinfectant. Know that the formula may contain anti-rust ingredients, so if you leave the tools in them for prolonged periods, they don't damage them. Know that after you submerge something, you should actually dry something and store it. Know that household bleach is 5.25% sodium hypochlorite. It's effective disinfectant that has been used extensively as a disinfectant in the salon. Know that using too much bleach can damage some metals, plastics, so be sure to read the label. Bleach can be irritating and damage the eye and hurt the skin. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions. This will be on the test. A fresh bleach solution should be mixed every 24 hours or when the solution has been contaminated. After mixing the bleach solution, date the container to ensure that the solution is not saved from the day, one day to the next. Know it's always safe to um, practice safety. Eye cover, hand cover, read the MSDF. Keep out of reach of children. Use tongs when you're pulling stuff out of a, a box for using the method we did in cosmetology school. Never place um, a disinfectant or any other product in an unmarked container. Label everything. Know that another word most often used in marketing to describe multi-use items is disinfectable, which means the items can be disinfected and used again. So multi-use, also known as reusable items, can be cleaned, disinfected on more than one person every time, even if the item is accidentally exposed to blood. They're usually non-porous. For example, hair irons, straighteners, curling irons, um, hair, hair color, provided you're getting a new thing. Um, some examples they give, rollers, permanent wave rods, metal combs, metal pushers, nail files, some, nippers and shears. In case you get blood on it, you can rinse it, disinfect it, and reuse it again. Know that single use are also disposable. You cannot use them more than once. Here's another story. When I was subbing for cosmetology class, I had caught something that was very wrong and I addressed it with the class. I walked in there and I smelled something. They had a whole pile of towels that were used. It smelled very musty. I addressed that with them and one of them thought it was a joke saying they reused dirty towels. I was appalled as a hairdresser, as a professional. They were giving a, um, one of them a facial. They had, I guess, previously had perm solution on it. They put warm water on the towel. They put it over someone's face and they actually almost threw up. That's not just really gross, but it's also and could be infectious. Know that it's very important not to reuse things like, um, if you're doing waxing the wooden stick, you don't want to use that and double dip because then you're going to contaminate that wax. That's happened, a lot of you guys will watch one of my favorite shows, Tabitha Salon Takeover. She goes in the salon and she shakes them up because she catches them using stuff over and over again. You don't want Tabitha coming to your salon. You also really don't want to have the local state agency to come shut you down because that's what happens. You can also spread infection that way. Examples of single use items, wooden sticks, cotton balls, sponges, gauze tissues, paper towels, and some nail files and buffers. They must be thrown out. Know that porous means that an item is constructed of material that has pores or openings. The item is absorbent. If a porous item contact, contacts broken skin or blood, you must throw it out. Do not use it again because the blood can enter it. Know that UV sanitizers are useful storage containers, but they do not disinfect or sterilize. Know the um, issues with electric sterilized. They cannot be used 
Electric sterilized bead sterilizers and baby sterilizers cannot be used to disinfect or sterilize implements. They can spread potentially infectious disease and should not be used in salons. Also know that UV lights will not disinfect or sterilize implements. Autoclaves are efficient sterilizers. Know that keeping a logbook for schedules of cleaning is very important. So make sure you read the rules on disinfecting electrical tools and equipment. You don't want to submerge them because if you get water on electric ingredient, or not electric ingredient, electrical equipment, and you plug it in, you'll be flying against the wall. Know that it's very important to properly clean the station. Every salon has their own method. Towels, linens, and capes. They have to be cleaned in a very proper manner. We have to first wash them um, with soap. You then put them in the dryer and then you fold them carefully. What you don't want to do is what we did in school. We take the towel and say, oh, it's warm. What I've done, just done is now contaminated that. I have to re-rinse it. Know that um, some clients want um, white towels. So if you have white towels, they don't want to see stains on them. So what you have to do is put a bleach solution in there. Make sure that you are putting the bleach with the whites because if you have colored or any kind of um, black linens or towels and you put bleach in that, you're going to cause all nasty bleach stains. We had a whole group of students that wrecked an entire fresh shipment. Know that disinfecting foot spas and pedicure units are very different. Some states require a logbook. Inspectors may issue fines if there is no logbook for using it. Know that chelating soaps or chelating detergents work to break down stubborn films and remove residues of pedicure products such as scrubs, salts, and masks. They're stronger and they help break down um, the film. Hard tap water residues can cause the effectiveness of the cleaners to go down. So that's why it's very important to know that. And if your area has hard waters, ask your local distributor for pedicure soaps that are effective in hard water. The information will be stated on the product's label. Know that some states require that all pedicures for cleaning and disinfectant tools, implements, and equipment must be recorded in the logbook. Know that products and equipment that have the word sanitizer on the label are merely cleaners. They do not disinfect. Items must be properly cleaned and disinfected after every use before using them on another client. I'm going to end this right here. I'm going to come on just to finish the rest of this because it's getting close to that 20 minute mark. We are almost at the end of this chapter and I'm sorry because I know this is like one of the longest ones in the book.